Hello, good morning. If it's morning where you are, welcome to another computer tutoring training session. This time we're going to have a look at Publisher. Now it's been a little while since we put a Publisher video out there. In fact, I think there's only one video that we have out there and that's how to do a book cover. Um, I had a comment basically that said that somebody asked, do you do something on guides? Well, guides are quite limited in Publisher and I've covered something with guides in the laying out of a cover. Uh, but I just thought maybe we could have a look at some of the guides within Publisher here. So I've got Publisher 2016 open up on the page there. Just move myself down a little bit. So you've got the page design tab just up here at the top. So you can use the page design tab. And here you have the guides drop down menu. So if you go to your guides drop down menu, let me just go up here and you can know, you can get certain preset guides that are available in Publisher 2016. So one of the most famous ones <coughs> Uh, is just the two column layout. So when I click on the two column layout there, if I just zoom back, um, what I'm just going to do is just move around with my mouse. And to do that on the page, I'm using my wheel. You can see that, my wheel on the mouse. I just press, when I press my wheel, notice that the mouse pointer on the page is turned into a four pointed arrow. And if I move my mouse, I can just pan around the page uh, to where I'll need it to go. And I can just Press the mouse button again. If I want to center a line, control uh, to center the document. Control Shift and L is the shortcut for that. So if I click on View and I want to look at the whole page, there you can see the shortcut. Control Shift and well, you can see it there. Control Shift and L. Brilliant. So here we go. We've got some guides that are available here. And, and what you can do is, if you need to, you can drag further guides out onto the page. So I can click and drag guides out, and then I can right-click on a guide, go to Ruler Guides here, and I can set certain positions for the guide. So at the moment, this is uh, I've got one at uh, 17, which is over here, point 8, which is fine there. If I wanted to sort of do an 18 there, I could type in 18 and type in a set. And what I'd have to do is just clear that 17, click on OK, and you can see this guy that just shifted a little bit to the right hand side there. That'd be fantastic there for if you want to line things up or move things up around, um, just make things aligned up. So we know this guide's are 18 points. Now say for instance you want to put a rectangle, like a big colored rectangle just on that right hand side there. So I'm just going to go and click on insert just at the top and go to shapes. And you can see all these different various shapes there. I'm going to click on the, um, oops. Uh, I'm going to click on shapes. That's it, and I'm going to click on this rectangle shape just here. Okay, so that's the one I eventually click on. So give that one a click. And I'm just going to roughly draw it. It should automatically try and snap to the guides, but it's never perfect in Publisher. I always find that when I'm dragging stuff, and I've been mucking around with this a little bit beforehand in preparation for this video, uh, and I just find that trying to use the guides in Publisher just doesn't seem to um, add up. It's a bit strange. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the border from around the outside of the shape. So that for that, I'm going to go up to Drawing Tools at the top under Format. And then there's an option there for Shape Outline. So I'm just going to click on the drop down list for Shape Outline and choose No Outline. So we haven't got those cartoony style borders, which people love, love to hate. Well, I personally do anyway. So well, let's just zoom in a bit. And to zoom in, again, I'm using the mouse on the keyboard here. So I'm holding now the control key, CTRL, bottom left hand corner. Use the mouse. Just roll away from you to zoom in, roll towards you to zoom out. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Just going to adjust and have a look and see how these guides. I can see the guide here, but if I just click and drag across, it's just uh, the snapping isn't particularly good. However, we do know that on 18, that's the point there. Uh, 80, um, up here, we know that this guide, as long as we haven't moved it, is on 18 centimeters. So what I can do here is I can click on this rectangle and use this measurement option here at the top. So if I just zoom in on this measurement option, just so you can see, so you can see my X and my Y coordinates, and it's just a little off. You see there, 18.02. I need to change it so the X there will be 18. So let's just zoom back. And I'm going to go here. And I'm just going to delete the 2, put a 0 in, and press Enter. Now I know that the left-hand side, this X point of that box, is 18. I can then go to the right-hand side here, just drag that out, uh, which is great. Excellent. Um, 
if you want to do a bleed area, and there's no such thing as bleeds there, you can just drag it out just to make it a little bigger, so you can just see uh, yeah, the width of it's a little wider if you wanted to there, just overlap it. Great, scroll down to the bottom of the page, everything's great, and we know that that is perfectly lined up. The other thing when it comes to guides as well, I think I covered this with the creating a covering publisher, but using guides, uh, it's best to use um, picture placeholders for your pictures. So don't sort of plonk pictures in and then think, well, where are these pictures going to go? Because that's really, you're going to go onto a path of design nightmare. It's just going to look just totally rubbish. So to give yourself a heads up, decide where the pictures go beforehand. Your layout should dictate your content in as much as what type of picture goes where. So let's just zoom back a bit, control shift it out so we can zoom back. I'm just going to move my measuring over here. I want to put a picture in this little section just at the top there. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to insert and I'm going to go to picture placeholder. There's my placeholder. I'm just going to drag that up to the top just here and I'm going to make that wider and bring this down here like so. Excellent. So I can see now I've got that picture placeholder available there. Again, you need to just zoom in and make sure, if I just zoom in and use the um, button on my mouse here, that's good, that these things are lined up here. So if you go here and you can drag that one to the right hand side uh, and you can see that if I drag this up a little bit to the top and drag this down to this guide here, just make sure it, uh, to the guide rather, there we go, just making sure it lines up. Let's go to the right hand side of the screen here. Here we go, and just make sure the right hand side lines up. That's good. Now if it's not lining up, if they're not snapping at all, what I suggest is under your um, uh, page design, you have options here, align to, and you've got guides and objects under the layouts section there. And again, if you want to bring up more guides and rulers, you can right click and go to ruler guides, or can you can use that drop down menu for guides just at the top, just there, and then go down to ruler guides so you can actually adjust your guides there. That's fantastic, excellent. So um, yeah, that's it really. I mean, what we can do now is we can decide, well, let's put a picture in here. So let me just control shift and L to bring back. I'm gonna click on the picture. Uh, I can browse my pictures from a file here. It's taken to me to my computer tutoring file. I'm just gonna have a browse down and see what I've got. There we go, there's a team of people uh, in our, all sitting on the floor. Uh, there we can use that one. Let's see, yeah, let's use that one there. It was a nice J JPEG with a logo there. Let me just double click on that. Pictures popped up there, and now all I can do is I can drag to adjust the picture where I want it to go, what I want it to see. Uh, I can go to the edges just here, just make the picture a little larger. And when I've finished, I click off of that. And so I can see my picture there. Yeah, that's great. That's good. Uh, the rest of this, I'm not going to go into this too much because I've done it with the cover. But as you can see, these guys, these um, uh, guides here. Now, because I've got this rectangle on the right hand side, I want to make sure that these are centrally aligned. So you're going to have to do a bit of math for this one. So if I just right click and go to ruler guides, and I can see I've got one at 10:31. So this would be this one here. Um, sorry, this one here, the guide here, that's a margin. So it's, uh, and then this one here at 10.69, and we know this is 18. So you'd have to do a little bit of maths there, just to give you a rough idea of how might this might work. These two are no good, so I'm just gonna clear these ones. You see, like so, so they're not there. So I need to know what's in the middle uh, here. So there's a couple of options that I can do. I can either draw one big fat text box just here, um, there we go. And then under the text box tools, I could then create columns. So now I now have two columns within the text box here. Probably an easier option. Uh, I can under the columns option, go when I go to more columns, I can choose a spacing between the columns. Just give it a bit of spacing there. That's fine. And then whatever I type in here should look good. Okay, just going to highlight that and copy it and paste it all the way down. There we go. And of course, you know, I've got better text that works there uh, in that way. Um, if I wanted to, I could probably go to the computer tutoring website, get a big, um, get a big bunch of. Let's do it. Let's have a look here. Let's have a look at our publisher course. There we go. Computer. There we go. Microsoft Publisher Beginners Course. There we go. I could just sort of 
highlight content just here. And there we go and copy that. Let me just close that down and then I could just paste that content basically into here. Uh, I could just if I copy that as well and you know draw that down and I could paste and yeah and then it goes automatically into this next one here. It gives it a nice layout as well. So that's one option. I would really prefer to do that option. The other option would be uh, is when you, if I just deleted that, do a bit of maths. You know this is 18, you know this is 0, and you know that this margin is 1. In fact, if I just zoom right into this one here, you can see here, uh, if I just zoom up here, is matching up to 1 on the horizontal ruler there. So what I can do is when I put in a guide, so if I go to my page design guides and ruler guides, on my vertical ruler guide, that's on 18, so what I need to do is maybe a bit of my maths is absolutely terrible. So let's have a look at a calculator. There you go. So I can do my 18 divided by 2. Uh, actually, minus 1 is 17 divided by 2 is 8.5. So it'd be 8.5 just here. I just need to add 1 to 9.5 so I can bring it there. So I can have a muck around with it a little bit there. So let's say if I add 9.5 in here and set, click on OK, and now I can see I've got a nice guide right in the middle here. So it's a little bit of maths working out uh, where you want this in the middle and taking into account this margin uh, here as well. And then what I would do is I would insert and draw text boxes between the two. If I needed a gap in between the, uh, the two there, say for instance a centimeter either side to create a gutter between the columns, uh, what I could do is if I go to my, let's go back to my page design and my guides here, uh, go to ruler guides, let's go to my vertical. So I've got a 9.5, let's add another one, let's add a 10.5, set that one in there, and let's add an 8.5 set that one in there, click on OK, and you can see I've got these ones here. In fact, that gutter looks absolutely massive, it's too big. Uh, let's just vary, let's get it a little smaller. So instead of uh, 8.5, let's um, delete that one, and the 10.5, let's delete that one. Uh, let us put in uh, 9 and 10. There we go. There we go, that's a lot better. So now what I would do is I can now start to put in text boxes. Where's my text box? There we go. And I can draw my text box in here as well if I need to, to line things up. Uh, let's draw another text box uh, as well. Insert another text box. I can just draw another one in here. There we go. Uh, if you're doing two te separate text boxes, and of course if you've pasted your text and you want to paste again, what you'll need to do if you see the red dots here that shows overset text, uh, that means there's more text than that text box can cope with. Under the text box tools at the top, so if I click off and I click on, I get this text box tools section here at the top. And then there's a little button that says create link that I can use to create a link between the boxes. So I'm going to click on create link, click in the other box and then the text flows through to the other box. So hopefully that gives you an inkling of what we can do with guides. You can use guides um, um, just on your different pages to try to make things sure things are consistent. And I hope this helps you understand how you can use guides in Microsoft Publisher 2016. So please like the video if you've got anything out of it. Please hit that subscribe button if you want to see more Publisher videos uh, and other videos from our training series. And one more thing, thank you so much for watching.